Tata Motors is on an absolutely wild update spree with its models. It started with the Nexon, then you had the Harrier, and now you have the big boy Safari. And Tata says they have made a conscious effort this time to make the Safari different from the Harrier. You have a refreshed design, some changes to the interior, and some mechanical updates as well. Has it all worked though? Let's find out. This is a rather comprehensive update to the Safari within three years of its launch. Now in terms of design, at the front, the theme is the same as the Harrier, which means you get the same sleek LED DRL up top with the welcome feature, the sequential turn indicators. Low down, you have the LED headlamps and the LED fog lamps, but everything around it is slightly different. The bumpers are redesigned. The grille is a one-piece grille, not like the split grille you have on the Harrier. And the elements in the grille are body colored for the Safari. Then you have the headlamps. If you look closely, you have the Safari lettering on it. And that's a nice little touch, some attention to detail. Low down, you have an all black treatment for the air intake. And you also have a four bash plate. Now it's plastic, it's not metal, but it does the job of making the Safari look rugged and tough. Over to the side, the first change you'll notice, and it is a big change, are the wheels. 19 inches now with 245 50 five section tires, and they definitely look smashing. Get aero inserts, and if you remember, they were also seen on the Tata Sierra concept that was shown at the Auto Expo. Definitely do the job very well of filling the arches and giving it a nice road presence. The wide tires do look rugged and befitting on an SUV this size. Apart from that, the length is slightly different because of the reprofiled bumpers. Wheelbase, on the other hand, has not changed. And then you get the same safari traits of a rising belt line and a kink in the roof as well. At the rear, things are a lot simpler in comparison to the front. You have the redesigned LED tail lamps that are now connected with an LED strip. And you have the reprofiled bumpers as well. Low down, you also get a formidable scuff plate. But the big change, though, is an electric opening tailgate. Now that was a big issue with the older Safari. It was just a bit too heavy to, you know, lift and shut every time. This has fixed things. So much better now and so much easier. The changes to the exterior are significant and also give the Safari its own identity. Something that can also be seen on the inside. Now inside the updated Safari, the difference compared to the Harrier is night and day. Where the Harrier gets that dark interior, this gets nice bright upholstery. And yes, it does look quite premium, especially when you pair it with the brown on the top of the dashboard. You also have some fake wood with fake pinstriping. I'm not sure this is to everyone's liking, so do let me know in the comments what you think about this passenger side layout. But apart from that, everything is the Harrier. You get the four-spoke steering with this glossy panel in the center, the illuminated Tata logo. And the problems we had with the Harrier and with the Nexon are on this one as well. The black glossy panels are just very difficult to maintain. Scratches, smudges, marks, really, really easy to pick up. You have this center HVAC control system also in gloss black. The only physical buttons are for the dual zone climate control. Everything else, including the fan speed, is on a panel. And that is not the most responsive. It has a good amount of lag. And when you're on the move, it's going to be very difficult to adjust the fan speed. Next up, you have the touchscreen, which on this top spec model is the big 12.3 inch unit. It really is nice and slick, gets wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And in terms of clarity and response, it is very impressive. A big sore point on the older car that has now been fixed. And then you have the digital instrument cluster as well, which is highly customizable. You can have a ton of designs in it and it gives you plenty of information. What it can also do, like the Nexon and the Harrier, is get your maps onto it fully. However, if you're using Apple, you will have to use Apple Maps. If you're using Android, you'll have to use Google Maps. Otherwise, you're not going to get the full view. Next, low down, you have the rotary knob for the drive mode select and the terrain response system. Now, the drive modes aren't backlit, so it is going to be difficult at night to look for them. But once you change them, you can also see a slight change in the ambient lighting and then it goes back to its default setting. So if you put it in eco, it'll turn green, city, it'll turn blue and sport, it'll turn red. Next, you have the wireless charging pad, which is really in an awkward position because you try to put your phone in and you end up hitting at least two buttons, the drive mode or you end up turning the knob. It really is an awkward spot and it will get scratches on your phone very, very easily. 
Low down, you have the new gear shifter, which is nice and premium. And again, all these things are on a glossy panel and gloss blacks look very well in pictures and, you know, in isolation. But when you get to the daily use of them, it is very difficult to maintain. Under that are two large cup holders and you also have a switch for auto hold as well. In terms of charging, you have a USB-A and you have a 45 watt type C port that is fast charging. The other thing is the JBL system. It gets 10 speakers along with a subwoofer and you also get 13 presets to choose from. And the song, as the beats go on, it also changes the ambient lighting just in the door handles. You have the massive panoramic sunroof, the front seats are powered. You also have memory functions for the driver's seat and you also have ventilation for the front seats as well. So a pretty packed car overall. On the whole, Tata has managed to up the premium quotient of the Safari with this new interior and it definitely does look like a flagship SUV now. With a wide array of variants, the feature list on the new Safari is extensive. What's also improved is the safety thanks to 7 airbags on the top spec, 6 airbags standard across the variants and of course the inclusion of ADAS. Now, like I mentioned, the wheelbase of the upgraded Safari has not been changed, which means space is still the same. So legroom, knee room, everything is really nice. Headroom is very good too. And the panoramic sunroof obviously helps elevate the sense of space. You also seated nice and high in a theatrical position, which means you're slightly above the front passengers. That gives you a good view out. Now, in terms of changes, the seats are the same. They get this nice bright upholstery but you see these additions on the headrests. Now they don't do a lot in terms of support, but I think when you pass out for a snooze, they'll just stop your head from rocking about. That's a nice touch. Other things are sun blinds for the rear, and that will stop the heat from getting in, which is a big touch. Speaking of heat, the captain seat version of the Safari also gets ventilated seats at the back, which is a hugely useful feature and is something that is exclusive to the Safari that's not even seen on luxury SUVs. And for the left-hand side passenger, you also have a boss function, which means at the touch of a button, you can change the position of the front passenger seat and extend more room here in the back. The other things are the same. You have vents in the pillars just as before. You get a type A port for charging along with a type C port and some space to keep your phone. Now getting into the third row of the Safari is slightly tricky, especially in the captain seat version because this seat does not tumble forward. So you only have a recline and it doesn't have a one mechanism, which means you have to then pull this lever and get the seat ahead. And even when it's fully ahead, there's not much of a cavity. What's easier instead is to use this route to go. The center space is large enough for adults to get in and into the third row. All right, in the back seat. Now, the third row is never really a place for someone who's over six feet. I, for one, will never be found in this row. But it's not too bad, especially given the fact that this seat can be adjusted for length, which means if the middle passenger adjusts his legroom slightly, I can properly sit here even for long hours. Headroom is a slight issue because my hair is grazing, but for someone who's not over six feet, it's not going to be a problem. You also have two three-point seat belts back here. You have individual headrests. You have blower controls for the AC and you have a type A port and a type C port as well. And because this is a captain seat, you at least have relief for one leg in the center. You can stretch it for as much as you want. Boot space on the Safari is not great with the third row up, but you can obviously fold that seat and make a lot more room. So what's the new Safari like to drive? And you'd expect it to be the same because the engine is the same as before, 170 horsepower, 2 litre diesel. The gearbox is the same as before as well, a 6-speed automatic, a torque converter unit. However, Tata claims that there have been improvements, particularly to the NVH and refinement of this engine. And to be honest, you can't really tell because it gets that typical diesel drone, it gets that clatter in the low RPMs. And as you get along, as you gain speed, it has this boomy sound, especially when you're overtaking. You press on the accelerator and that boom just seeps into the cabin. I mean, vibrations are well contained. You don't have any vibrations on the steering or in the seats. But you hear that that engine keeps droning away. So that definitely needs work.
Performance though is not too bad. This is a really strong engine. Torque is available in plenty. So you get a good move on every time you flex the accelerator. But you just have to live with that engine sound. What's missing on the Safari is also the option of a petrol engine, which would have surely helped with the refinement. Then you have the gearbox, the six-speed torque converter automatic, and it is a torque converter, all right, because this gearbox does not like to be rushed. The shifts themselves are smooth, but you cannot expect those quick response times. It is a laid-back gearbox, and if you rush this, you're only going to be greeted with that coarse diesel sound. However, for sport, it amps up the response and it is noticeable as well. So you press on sport. As always. And now the engine is a bit livelier, the gearbox too. It holds the revs, does not upshift early. So yeah, you do get a bit more performance. Now with this update, Tata has also given the Safari paddle shifters. Now they are metallic, nice to the touch, but they are nowhere near what you'd expect from paddle shifters because when you have these things, you expect control to be in your hands. You expect the gearbox to work according to your liking and with this, it just doesn't. Firstly, the moment you tug along the paddle, it goes into sports mode, which is quite nice because you probably engage with the paddle shifters only when you have a nice stretch of road and sport mode is pretty apt for that sort of a thing. However, if you don't use it for long, it will switch back to city mode on its own. But the problem remains with the response because the moment you try and get enthusiastic with it, it flashes a message. It's a fail safe basically to save the gearbox from abuse, but it also just doesn't let you do anything. So it is quite frustrating. You'd rather just not use it at all. Now the paddle shifters might not be a great addition, but what is a very good addition is EPS. The Safari now gets electric power steering as opposed to hydraulic power steering earlier and that has made it such an easy to drive car, especially in the city. On a winding section of road, it is quite nice and it changes between the modes as well. So Eco and City get a lighter steering mode, but when you switch to Sport, the steering weighs up and you have a bit more feel. That said, the biggest advantage of this EPS is when you are parking or making three-point turns. It really has transformed this whole safari. Earlier, you had to use a lot more muscle, but this now is just one finger twirl. And in terms of handling, Tata claims an improvement as well because it now gets a slightly wider track because of the 19-inch wheels. The wider track with the wide tyres does mean it gets better grip, especially on loose surfaces, but in the corners, the difference is negligible. Tata claims to have retuned the suspension as well, so stuff like spring rates, dampers, bushings have been updated. But it still feels stiff with a good amount of body movement over a bad section. That said, it does feel very tough on a bad section, that Land Rover platform really shines through. But if you want that nice supple ride, that's not what this is. And finally, the updated Safari also gets level 2 ADAS. You have radars at the front and at the rear. And then you have the usual goodie bag that comes with ADAS level 2, which means you have adaptive cruise control, automatic braking, you have collision warning, and you also have lane departure warning. Lane keep assist, however, will be a later update. It will be a software update and that will make it into the car. And well, how good is the ADAS? Well, to be honest, adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning work really well. Collision warning works well, but I'm not sure about the automatic braking. Now, I have it on high sensitivity and yet it is not braking on its own, even when I get really close to the car in front. So that's, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. What does work really well are the rear cross traffic alerts and the blind spot monitor as well. And what I also really like on the updated Safari is the 360 degree camera. It really is crisp, very, very good in terms of resolution and it is a big help, especially when you have to park this thing. Now with this Safari update, Tata has done what it does best, update the car because that is what you always get on Tata's, you know, more and more updates until it's time for an all new product. Now, this one is quite a comprehensive one. You have a lot of changes on the outside. Like we saw, the interior is totally different as well. The amount of features, they've really gone to town with the features on this car. And then you have the variants. 
so many variants to choose from that means a wide array of budgets and that means there will be a safari for everyone but what will play a key role in all this is of course the pricing you see the safari has gotten a lot techier a lot more feature loaded and that means prices are going to go up as well prices for the safari will be out on the 17th of october and since there have been a significant amount of additions and changes we expect it to cost between 17 to 26 lakh rupees With this update many of the safari's cons have been addressed with the electric power steering, electric tailgate, more features and a modern design. However, the engine refinement, bumpy ride and some ergonomic issues are still present. But what the safari will be banking on the most is the exterior design and its look which it just aces. The hugely practical cabin and lastly you have the wide array of variants on offer. It sure is a lot more car for the money now and buyers will definitely appreciate that.